In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the tribes of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people that escaped the sword have found favor in the desert. As Israel comes forward to be given his rest, the Lord appears to him from afar. With age-old love, I have loved you so I have kept my mercy toward you. Again, I will restore you, and you shall be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Carrying your festive tambourines, you shall go forth dancing with the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. Those who plant them shall enjoy the fruits. Yes, a day will come when the watchmen will call out on Mount Ephraim, Rise up, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. Alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, 
Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to, their, said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. This is one of those Gospels that I absolutely used to hate when I, when I heard it, especially when I was younger. I remember people trying to explain it, that Jesus but it always just seemed like Jesus was being so harsh with this woman, re making that reference to dogs. It's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. It, it was an insult, and it sounds just about as much as an insult as it does to our ears today. But the more I pray with it, the more I study about it, the more it appears that these, at least in a mysterious way, these two, Jesus and the Canaanite woman, were in, in a way, kind of cahoots to, to try to spread the message, especially to all of those who were following, who were closer nearby. Because it is clear, even though Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that that was not his mission. His mission ultimately was for everyone. Of course, we see that in Christianity as it exploded, as his ministry exploded for all, for all to come and to, to be fed by him, especially after his death and resurrection. He, he, his ultimate mission was for everyone. And that, of course, here in this gospel is beginning to be revealed right away, right here. And so he, part of what he's doing here is naming what everyone was expecting him to be. Everyone was expecting him because Israel was the, was the, um, the, the chosen people, still is the chosen people. But he, Israel was the chosen people here. And those Israelites of this time would have expected that the Messiah was only concerned about them. And so he was speaking what, something that was deeply, deeply held. And so he's naming it for them. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And every person in Israel, I might be exaggerating a little bit, referred to the Canaanites as dogs. They were outsiders, not to be accepted into Israel, not a part of the chosen people. And so Jesus is naming that. But then being in cahoots with this beautiful Canaanite woman who comes and reveals that she has faith, faith in this son of David. Now Jesus can really fulfill his ultimate mission, allowing his mercy to explode forth already here for this woman. She, in a way, is in cahoots. She's allowing Jesus to fulfill that deeper part of mission. It's an important gospel for us today because there are still, I don't want to say any of us here, but, but there's certainly a possibility of, um, of deeply held prejudices we might have about another person or another group of people. And we might expect Jesus to walk over them. Or we, might, we might even look interiorly and say, well, Jesus doesn't want to heal this part of my life or he doesn't love this part. And here, of course, he's proclaiming, no, it is for all. I haven't just come for a few. I haven't just come for those who are already perfect, but I have come to bring all to me, 
It's the opposite, really, of what the message seems to be on, on the surface of the gospel. So today we allow that, that truth to feed our own hearts as we go out from here. To everyone that we encounter, remember, Jesus is longing to be given over for them. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For all priests and religious, may the Lord continue to bless them in their vocations. We pray to the Lord. For state and federal leaders, may the grace of the Holy Spirit empower them in their efforts in protecting all life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. For those who experience doubt that God hears their prayers, May the peace of Christ console them and strengthen their faith. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit empower us to bear good fruit for the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. For for all of those who have died, especially for Michael Francis Quinn, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be welcomed into the heavenly Jerusalem. We pray to the Lord. Father of love and mercy, you know our every need. We ask you to graciously hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I, I leave you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer, spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.